Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Bite. I'm Corey Nockreiner. For today's story, I'm going to give you a hacktivist update, kind of in honor of Guy Fox Day. If you're not from the UK, you may not know that November 5th is Guy Fox Day, and this has to do with an old gunpowder plot on that day where a number of rebels tried to assassinate a king, but instead were arrested, and Guy Fox was one of the people arrested in this gunpowder plot group. In any case, you probably know a lot of hacktivist groups like Anonymous use the Guy Fox mask and also use November 5th as a day to kind of do their political hacktivism. There's two things I want to talk about that happened on this Guy Fax Day. First of all, let's talk about Anonymous. They decided to launch OpKKK on November 5th. This is something they've done before. It's their whole campaign to kind of unmask KKK. And as much as you dislike the KKK, if you're like me, this whole idea of doxing people can have some very bad ramifications. Oftentimes, the people they're doxing may have nothing to do with what they really say they're doing. And it can turn kind of into this mob mentality where innocent people get pointed out. In fact, early in the week, someone that Anonymous says wasn't associated with them released a whole bunch of so-called KKK members that really weren't KKK members. Nonetheless, still on November 5th, uh, Anonymous did release a list of about a thousand people that they say are from the KKK. Again, as much as I don't like the KKK, I don't think publicly doxing people is good. It could lead to vigilantism. It could be misinformation where these people really aren't associated with the KKK. And I really don't like these type of hacktivist campaigns, even if I kind of agree with their dislike of this particular group. Another interesting hacktivist update from this week was more activity from Crackers with Attitude. This is that hacktivist group that hacked the director of the CIA's Yahoo email account. It's led by this guy named Cracker, who has PHP hacks on Twitter. In any case, apparently they got access to even more government workers' information. For instance, apparently they got got access to the database that many different police and authorities use to share arrest records and things like that. They also released a very long list of phone numbers and email addresses and names of many people in the police and the FBI and other government agencies. So they're still trying to dox authorities in the United States. So what can we learn about these hacktivist campaigns? Well, first of all, we need to be very careful with the data we put out there. In both these cases, these hacktivists are doxing us. They're sharing data that we've shared with others publicly. Now the other thing we need to think about is our credentials. Basically everything on the internet hinges on our authentication. If a bad guy can steal our credential, even from a site that we don't really care about, if we're using the same credential everywhere, sometimes they can use that credential to log on to a much more confidential system, such as an arrest record database. And then that allows them access to a whole lot of sensitive data. So be very careful with what you share online. And and make sure to follow strong security practices as far as your credentials. Don't use the same credentials everywhere. Anyways, that's it for this week's hacktivism update. Thanks for watching.